Hello, it's Dingo, Rooster's Player. Just wanted to let you guys know that we're opening up purchasable personal shoutouts on the Fool's Gold Sands podcast in a segment called Coffee Time, where you and your friends can pay us to read your personal messages. Maybe it's a happy birthday or wishing someone luck on a project. Either way, now you can hear our silly voices doing silly messages you wrote for a fee. Also, this helps keep the show going, you know, paying editors, etc. So if you're interested, please go to foolsgold.fun slash sans. Also, sorry for being a, a little bit late on this episode. Just had to do some extra editing. So uh, anyway, now we'll get back to... Previously on Fool's Gold Sands. <laughs> Welcome to the Beulah Tray. Yeah! Rooster, you just see a blue person, like like light blue person, manifest yeah. in front of you and just like reach out to you and grab you. You're being held and pushed through everybody sitting behind you and the train wall. Jessica snapped in half. Oh, shit. Lady oh. revenge! The old lady exploded. Oh. How dare you enter my domain unannounced? So you're a genie too. Yeah. You were supposed to be my guide, and you don't know anything. This apparently could have been avoided if you had known that you cannot travel into another genie's territory. Well, when you put it like that... Hi, so I'm Nira. I'm a little touchy-feely with strangers. You want me to help you after you broke Jessica? I'll grant you a wish. You are able to do that? Yeah. No, don't do that. Okay, so as we speak, your friends on the train are currently being raided by Captain Carmichael and the Scorn Pirates. And those are the same people that currently have my lamp and my pet, and I would like those back. And who might you be to request the presence of the great Captain Carmichael? My name is Kor. I'm a traveler from the Demon Realm. So I wanted to ask if I could work for you. You're going to be with all their cargo. You might be able to find Sandra and maybe some of their other valuables, including the lamp. That's smart. Thank you. Okay, I'll try and figure out if I can find the lamp. By going right up to Carmichael's house, I think. I have a uh, business proposition for you. Well then, come in. And to what do I owe the pleasure of seeing you again? What does the interior of this place look like? Gaudy. Um, <laughs> full of loot. Everything yeah. gilded. And in uh, a display case near the... Like, he's got like a big old like piratey throne he's sitting on. Just as flashy as, as his outfit and the hat. Mm -hmm. And right beside it is a display case uh, with a very peculiar looking lamp in it. Mm -hmm. Uh, along with some other display cases of just very unique looking items and weapons and artifacts. Does it look like the lamp is being held in any kind of particularly sound or tough case? Or is it just glass panels? Uh, you can't tell exactly, but this kind of just looks like a glass display case. Okay. With a lock on it. Rooster, what would you like to do? Um. Okay, so he's in a cage right now, right? Yeah. Well, with a bunch of people, and they're, and they're giving you shit right now. Like, what, the, what the hell were you thinking? I was got a shot with a cannon. I'm sorry. I he wasn't dick, and I didn't know he was gonna do that. Um, Deeb also reaches into his little bag, pulls out a plate, and says, "You didn't finish your food." <laughs> I know. Go eat, little boy. Get your strength. Thanks, but no. Um, what? Not right now. We have to figure out how to get everybody out, right? Everybody nods. Yeah, well, thank everybody's in agreement. <laughs> yeah, you kind of like, well, thankfully for you guys, I have been in this situation before. And he goes, uh, now everybody just like cover me. Make sure nobody can see me. So stand around. They, they do. They stand okay. around. He squats down. Yeah. And uh, also, Nelthor stands right beside you. Huh? <gasps> Nelly! I didn't know we were in hey. the same cage. Well, I think everybody's in the same cage. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, there's less people. Are, are you okay? You were used to explode some people. Yeah, I have to tell you, I'm not feeling super great right now. You don't look super great, if no. I must be honest with you. No. But um, I think Cora's pretty mad at me. Oh. So I'm going to get you guys out, and I think we might part ways. Oh. oh. I don't know. He might do his own thing. I'm not entirely sure, but... um. What, one exploding grandma is enough to split you two? <laughs> <laughs> That's not a very strong Evidently. friendship. <laughs> 
<laughs> Everybody's got a final straw in exploding grandma's cores, apparently. <laughs> well, Nellie, I didn't know. I didn't. I didn't know any that stuff. What it, stuff? It was a genie. Oh. Oh. Yeah. She came in and took me and then took me out and then everybody else got hurt because of me. And she snapped Jessica and she fixed it. But apparently I wasn't supposed to be in her domino. Um, Whatever that means. Oh, I believe you mean domain. That's the word. Oh, right. so they have domains. Interesting. Peculiar. Oh, I'll, uh, I'll remember that. Yeah. Well, I Mysterious wasn't, creatures. I wasn't supposed to be there and I didn't know that. And now Kor's really mad at me. So your people are territorial. I don't know. I've never really explored that, nor have I ever met another genie. So, um, well, congratulations. I don't really feel like I won anything, <laughs> but anyway, I'm just gonna focus. Yeah, I'm. Ha- I'm happy to resume this discussion once we have escaped from these pirates. Uh, anyway, so he kneels down onto his knees and he goes to one of the bars and he's gonna start chewing on it because his teeth are real good at that. They, uh, yeah, they sure are. Give me, um, give me strength roll. I only rolled a five. Oh. I haven't done it for a bit. Ow. Give me a second. <laughs> 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 Maybe loosen it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Let me just, uh, gonna try again? Sure. Ooh, that's much better. That's a 22. You remembered how to chew metal and you bite your way through them. Uh, so far, none of the guards have noticed it. So he spends that his time just trying to chew enough that he can, like, bend the bars to open up for a hole. Okay. Takes you about 15 minutes, but you do so. Okay. Uh, and then he just, yeah, he bends them like, ah, okay. Should be big enough for everyone. Kind of like looks around. Is it big enough for everyone? Yes, actually it is. Okay. Okay. Because uh, they're mostly dwarves. Oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> My people. <laughs> it's like you made like a human sized hole and they're all like, yeah, <laughs> we'll fit. <laughs> okay. Uh, Nelly, stand in front of it, please. Yes, sir. And Thank he does. You. And then he says, okay, everybody get in close. They huddle. So Cora's going to go. And grab a lamp of another genie, Ooh. which is going to control the genie's pet, which was Sandra. So Sandra's going to come, and then we'll probably just mess up a bunch of stuff, and then we'll, like, get out of this hole, and we'll all jump. Oh, I don't think Jessica can handle everyone. Why don't we just steal their boat? Mm-hmm, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Or steal back our boat. Is our boat intact? They look at it, and it's like, yeah. Is it not? Is it pretty dinged up? It's pretty dinged up. Okay, okay, then we're going to be stealing a pirate boat. Mm-hmm. Does anybody know how to sail? It's like Law looks around the crowd and people are like, oh, nobody want to sail. And then like one person steps forward, a large person with a specific hat. A large dwarf. Oh, oh this- And Deeb says, aye, aye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Captain Deeb. <laughs> okay. Cor, what do you want? I'm here to make a, uh, uh, to act as an emissary for my god, and um, Lord Abereth, to you. Uh, awkward, but okay. You're one of those religious types. <laughs> the Jehovah's Witness. Yeah. <laughs> Have you heard the good word of Abereth? Yeah. <laughs> what do I need to say to get you out? Like, don't come in, I'm naked? Like, what is it? I'm not here to preach the good word of my Lord. I'm here to offer a business, a business deal between the two of you. The abyss would be benefit greatly from trades agreements with you and your pirate crew. You are very successful and um, I'm sure it could be a good feather in your cap to be working with uh, the esteemed and great and powerful Abereth. A little bluff. Huh? (laughs) All right. I got a 17. You got a six. Yeah. I I think (laughs) it's still... So I think as soon as you're like, oh, you know, like Abereth would really like appreciate that. He's definitely you're appealing to that like over like sense of like greatness with yeah, him and yeah. he's like hmm I think Abrith would appreciate me yeah yeah I think I think there's there like if somebody somebody smarter than um captain here would probably notice the visible disgust on Kor's face as he's saying this shit yeah. out loud to him <laughs> yeah Captain Carmichael says all right all right Captain Carmichael is interested in this deal so what's what are the terms firstly we would need to uh show something to my god to prove that you actually do have resources just a, a token of first business just something to show off oh i mean look around i got plenty of nice items here and let me see then what and would... plenty of gold and silver fresh in the harbor then uh, let me peruse and see which would get my lord's eye how about that and he points at the genie lamp that oh yes. that's quite the ask that's that is a rarity 
Uh, I don't know. Um, Nothing mm. better to impress a god than a rarity. I think I have something more demon apt. And uh, he points to a different display case and walks you over there and says, how about this? A uh, sphere of annihilation. Quite literally will destroy anything in its path. I mean, it feels like, feels befitting of a demon lord to destroy anything in their path. Ah, uh, mm, he already has three. What? Uh, mm. <laughs> uh, I, I chose the lamp specifically because it's something that my lord does not already have. And it is a grand item that I'm, shows off your prowess because no one else on the surface could have something like that, I'm sure. Am I wrong or am I right? You're correct. I'm afraid I must decline. It's mm. simply too precious. Mm. Well, then how about the thing underneath it? And he points at the object underneath it in the showcase. Let's see what it is. It's like a box of Kleenex. <laughs> it's, it's just, just like a, nor- yeah, a whatever normal it is. thing. The cleaning supplies? Yes. You don't have that in the abyss? No, it's... No. Well, then, yes, I have the greatest and the best cleaning supplies possible. Please, if I could take a closer look, then. Oh, yeah, of course. He opens up the showcase? Well, I don't th- I don't think the cleaning supplies are locked up with the showcase. I, he like, pointed to the like, thing I'm, underneath the case. Like, I want the thing in the case underneath the genie lamp. But it's its own case. It's its own case. Oh, it's, I like, see. It's just resting on, like, a pillow. And oh. I was like, I was thinking like below, like under the table kind of deal oh. is where like there's some cleaning okay. supplies. Okay. All right. All right. Well then, yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll walk over to the cleaning supplies so that we're right next to the showcase. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Mm, yes. Very excellent. I would like to cast a spell. Okay. Sure. Okay. So it's a close cast. It's a will in the gates and it's called heartache where the caster fills the subject with heart-wrenching sorrow that renders them incapacitated for one round. Oh. I'm going to turn him into a sniveling crybaby. <laughs> Yay! Damn. Sniveling crybaby. All right, so what He's does he have the roll? little baby. How's this go down? Does he have roll a save or something? 15. He has to be the 15. Well, you got a 10. Oh, nice. yay! So you fill him with heartache and sorrow. <gasps> and what like... do you say? <laughs> Yeah, do you say something, or yeah. does it like bring it forth from within? Baby. Yeah, he says your hat is extraordinarily stupid. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> and then, can I shove him in a cabinet? <laughs> uh, well, it's just display cases in here, so there's no cabinets. There's but not, I think he just like, like a closet. I think he just falls in? down to his knees. And okay. Just like, eh. All right. Well, anyway, he's crying, and I'm gonna smash this. How long does that last? Uh, one round. One round. You got six seconds. Um, so you smash the case. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You pick up the lamp. Yep. Cool. Uh, as soon as you pick it up, you feel power. Mm. You definitely feel a little tingle. Oh, okay. And also, you notice crawling out of the lamp and then onto your hand is a small sand creature, Aww. blue in color. I take it you're Sandra. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Sold. <laughs> the cord, cord just goes, hmm. <laughs> nods appropriately. <laughs> okay, we're leaving. Okay, you bo- you get the hell out of yeah, Dodge. Yeah, I'm booking it. Sure, you do. Um, and, you know, soon after the captain gets in composure, it's like, oh, I have to clean up. Um, and then starts, of course, screaming bloody murder. It's like, thief! Guards! Hooligans! He's just wiping away the tears. Yeah, it's like, I can't... Yeah, he, to- he totally looks like he's been crying his uh, his Absolutely. eyes out. Yeah, he's got mascara running. Yeah, down. oh yeah, that'd Absolutely, be great. he does. <laughs> yeah. He's a mess. He's got he's got like lipstick smeared to one side of his mouth, where <laughs> he wiped his mouth. Capture those ruffians! <laughs> I mean, I'm just bursting through the front doors. <laughs> yeah, I think that's our cue. Yeah, that's you know our cue. Yeah. Time we go out. Okay, you and the 12 dwarves escape the cage. <laughs> oh, you had an opportunity there. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and I took it. Um, and then you attack the boat, or what are you doing? Uh, we're going to the boat. Okay, there's pirates on it. But we're waiting for them to move, because they're obviously... Well, they're just kind of working at the dock. But they've just got orders. Yeah. True. They they're going to rush running. towards you okay. right now. Yeah, come at me, bitches. All right. So there are 15 pirates running at you. Meaning the boat is largely undefended right now, Rooster. He's going to watch and see what happens first. Okay, right now they're just like, charge. Okay. Uh, can you guys handle the boat? Aye. Okay. I got to go help my buddy. Core. Mm-hmm. What are you, like, thinking right now? He's thinking about how to, like, impede these pirates that are coming at him. Like, stall them out and keep them away from the boat long enough for them to steal the boat. He's running resistance and distraction, mostly. He's, I have an exact thought of him using uh, ice slick to, like, turn the floor to ice again to maybe cause them to slip and fall. Go for it. Sure. As they're running at core, he will cause, he will cast ice slick. <sighs> I rolled a five. Yay. <laughs> so they all go, wee, boom. 
and they fall on their asses. But he's a very fucking Looney Tunes ass pirate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's sitting up their captain. Yeah, true. And of course, he's running behind you like smear. <laughs> <laughs> Your hat is still dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Don't bring it up. Get him. Um, yeah, and you run uh, towards Rooster. Rooster, is there anything you want to do? The 15 pirates have all fallen right now. I guess like Rooster's like, if Core's in front and there's like 15 guys in front of him all fallen, Rooster's in the back and he's trying to make sure that all the, the other people are going up into the, the boat. He just, I guess he looks at Core and just goes, you got it? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's go. Sure. Core is going, he's running, continuing, he's going towards the boat and he's going to do what you did, where he's going to get running Stark and he's going to slide across the ice. Hell to yeah. the power, power slide. slide. He's going to power slide. Hell yeah. Okay. Did I make a booster roll for those? Yeah. What do you have to roll? Balance, right? Yeah, balance. Roll balance. Not my strong suit. That's a four. Yep. <laughs> It's okay, the face momentum plant. could carry me. Yeah, that's true. It's like, he's still heavy. He's true. just like he's a bowling ball. ball. You face plant, but you, you keep sliding forward. It's, it's kind of like when we went snowboarding. Yeah, thank you for <laughs> recording that. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it happens all the time. Everyone falls down when they're snowboarding. That is very true. Okay, and you guys rush to the boat. Core, spot check. Uh, 16. Sandra has jumped off your hand into the ocean. Mm. Like, as you're boarding the boat, it's just like... Mm. And jumps Okay. Down. Uh, I assume she did that on purpose. Looks like it. Okay. And you guys are on the boat. All right. Now, I'm going to roll for Deeb to see just how well he can captain these these miners. I'm not on the boat. Oh, you're not on the boat? Okay, what are you doing? No. Sorry. I'm running into Jessica. Oh, right. You're going to Jessica. You reach her. And by the time you reach her now, the pirates are starting to, like, get up from their slick. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to get past them again. How would you like to do that? Well, can't I, you just take off from the dock? Can't I just take off where I'm from? Yeah. No, you can just take off from the dock. You're absolutely right. Sweet. And now I'm going to roll for Deeb. Captain roll. I guess that's like a ride. He got an A team. Apparently, he's a good captain. My <laughs> God. So yeah, Deeb's throwing out orders, and the dwarves are like, "Oh, okay, yeah, sure." Um, they're used to hard work, and apparently, sailing's not much different. So eventually, they get that boat out of the harbor. And then also, Rooster, you you know, pop on Jessica. You get going out of there. I'm staying with the boat. Yeah. And then you hear a thunderous roar as the entire ocean shifts, and a big old huge sand. Hydra pops out of the water ah. in that beautiful blue color. Ooh. Yeah, it's it's very like shimmery. <laughs> when you say like a sand hydra, does does she have like multiple heads? Yes. Okay. So the, she kind of looks like maybe a Nessie with like multiple heads. Yes. Okay. That is great. And I'm gonna you know, I'm gonna roll for heads. I'm gonna roll a d10 for head count. How many heads do you smooch? Oh, it's ten. Okay. okay. Wow. Oh wow. A ten-headed hydra. That's a lot of heads. That's a lot of heads. They are now snapping at people on the dock, indiscriminately kind of, just more like, ah, you know, trying to scare them back. And they're just knocking them around. Okay. So you mean like, not, you don't mean indiscriminately, you mean kind of just like, like haphazardly or haphazardly. like- Haphazardly. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Just scaring the people off. Not and, even being particularly violent or gruesome. Well, it's violent, it's just, but it's not like ripping people apart. Like, no, yeah. that's not happening. Moments after that, um, Sandra turns around and actually starts pushing you guys out, giving you speed boost. Thank well, you, Sandra. About, I don't know about Rooster. If he, if she can really well, she doesn't know if I'm good or not. You're fine. Okay. Yeah. Also, she pushes the remnants of the train out with you guys. Anyways, uh, you guys escape. Good job. Woo! Woo! That was a clean getaway. And uh, you make your way out to the desert, and people are cheering on the boat. Yay! You know. Also, as we're like sailing away, while while still within earshot of the cove, Cor like re like leans out the back end and he says, "Eddie Bruce would never make a deal with you. You suck, you tiny child in an overly pompous hat." <laughs> I will get revenge on you, Cor. Grow five feet and then we'll talk. And then at the horizon, you see a blue misty figure, and approaches you guys and core you can feel the lamp just like humming in the presence of Nira. Mm -hmm. Also you can hear chirping behind you from the Hydra mm -hmm. who's quite happy to see her old master. Hmm. I, I mean I imagine that we uh, we, reun we we like pull up beside Nira in the sand or like we get close enough to her that core can Core can like speak to her at least and with like sincerity and confusion he looks at her and he's like how did you ever let how did you ever lose your lamp to that guy uh well I'm not the only genie who's lost a bet or two 
came from my core. <laughs> that came from your core, yeah. Uh, and now, core, Nira looks at you expectantly to hand over her lamp. He gives her the side eye a little bit. Hmm. You're not going to become our, al- our enemy the moment I hand this over to you, are you? No, I have better things to do. I was just defending my domain, and now that I know that he is not a threat of any measure, I won't be taking any hostile action. In fact, you're welcome to join me for the night. He's like climbing up the boat. <laughs> just climbing up the side of the boat? Yeah, yeah. Can I just climb up there? Sure, absolutely. I'm not going to make you roll for it. There's ladders. Skitter, skitter, so. skitter. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to think that he's going up the boat, but he doesn't realize there's a ladder. So he's literally just clawing his way up. Um, and then he looks to the side and goes, all right, there's a ladder. And Rooster, when, you, like, when you're close to reaching the top, you feel a push from below to push you up on top of the deck <laughs> as Sandra has helped you up, nudging oh. you up with one of her heads. Mm, thank you. Uh, yeah, he gets up and he kind of like shuffles over top. Yeah, um, you enter the scene of Nira holding out her hand expectantly towards Kor, telling him how you are no threat at all. Hey, I mean, you're right. I'm not here to fight. I'm not here to hurt people. Do what you did, which was, you know, hurting people. And Jessica, you destroyed Jessica. I'm going to be mad at you forever on that one. I've repaired uh, her. She's fine now. She's in I one know. piece. You rode her from the Pirate Cove. No, I, I know. But you obviously still have to apologize. I believe I have, but I'm, I'll am i gladly apologize again. I am sorry. No, 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 no. Not to me. And kind of gestures to Jessica and the people behind him. Everyone. Oh, to everyone. Okay. Not just the Sand Sailor. And Jessica. Um, all of you, uh, I am sorry for causing you some stress and grief and sorry jessica for breaking you my bad yeah i guess she'll accept it right got to turn to jessica i think she is all right here is your lamp back thank you she grabs it certainly when she touches it there's like a there's a bit of like a magic aura you feel just as that connection is re- remade between the two of them and she says wonderful thank you now would you like to join me for the evening before it gets dark in the desert you're welcome to stay with me. That depends how far away we are from Kikoma. Kikoma, I would say two days. And maybe staying here for the night is a good idea. Mm, no funny business. Will there be booze? Sure, why not? We'll celebrate this occasion. And I'm sure you'll find some in that ship of yours. Captain Carmichael and uh, and his scorn pirates usually have quite a bit of booze around. All right, well, I guess I'll take that. Uh... And you'll need to tell me all about how you dealt with him. Please spare no detail. Kind of turns to core. I made him cry like a tiny baby. Okay. I would like to hear all of the <laughs> yeah, details, I do please. too. <laughs> <laughs> and Captain D anchors the ship. Literally just throws an anchor overboard, mm. which like just sinks into the sand. It's like, well, I think it's going to hold, hopefully. Uh, yeah, it should be fine. Uh, what, what time of the day is it right now? It's evening. Okay, so it is evening. Okay, so it does make sense for us to... To yeah. Stop thinking. How how do the people handle Nira, the ones who like she very nearly squished earlier? With caution. People are just kind of steering clear and like they, some of them aren't all. I mean, it's a genie. You don't see that every day. So certainly. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> they give uh, Nira all the attention. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she's she's regal. She's six feet tall. She's she flowing. hovers. Yeah. yeah. You might have you, the sandiest gremlin. <laughs> yeah. So, sorry, you're not getting any credit from these dwarves. Yeah, he's definitely like, now he's just more mad. <laughs> he's pouting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nobody objects. To staying? I think there is some people talking back and forth, and perhaps a good amount of them say, no, I'll just watch the ship. You guys go on without me, you know. So some people will stay out here to keep guard, essentially. Oh, like we're gonna go to her place? Are you asking her? Okay. Are we going to your place? Yes. You may come to my place. Can I bring Jessica? I don't know if Jessica's going to fit. What do you mean? Well, it's it's a large sand sailor. Yeah, so? And he's a big guy. Points to Cor. Yes, will I fit? You'll fit. Kind of looks at you. I am also quite large. Yeah! (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, you're not quite as large as the sand sailor, but sure, you can bring in the sand sailor. Good. Just keep the sand out. <laughs> I'm trying to lose my patience here. I don't normally get mad. I'm having a moment. I'm feeling emotions I haven't felt for a long time. Okay, Maybe you're just hangry. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> and she sets down her lamp 
on the deck of the ship and opens the top, which then swirls with magical colors. You see all sorts of colors, but eventually it settles on like a blue similar to her own like overall color scheme of the uh, of the sand and her outfit. And it opens into a portal. And once the portal settles, it reveals a staircase leaning down. Rooster is... And she walks down. What the fuck? And it stays open. After you. I'm not going in. No way. No way. No, 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 no. I'm not going in there. Oh, that's right. You don't like tiny places. No, and also, I don't like lamps. You hear from below, it's not tidy. You're going to trap me in there. That's what you're going to do. You're going to keep me in there, and I'm going to be stuck. And I... (laughs) I keep trapping? She comes back up. He has... She sticks her head out. Uh, I would not trap you in my lamp. You get to spend one night, no more than that. She walks back down the stairs. Corsora, you were going to say something. Uh, I'm, he was going to elaborate that rooster does not like tiny places. But then you get it, the same response apparently. as earlier saying, it's not tiny. Uh, can you give me a little bit of time? Very well. I, I'm curious. I'll go check out the tiny place. Just uh, kind of like puts a hand on your chest before you like walk forward. So just uh, just just be careful. Yeah. He is confused about why you're concerned for him. He's like, I'll be fine. Okay. And you know, if it's scary, just come right out. Okay. If it's scary, I will handle it. No, no, no. This is a different type of scary. You'll. Okay. Just promise me you'll get out if you don't want to be there. Okay, if I decide I do not want to be in there, I won't be in there anymore. Got it. Okay. 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 Cool, cool. Uh, I'm going to go to Jessica for a moment, okay? I'll, right. I'll see you the, when I see you. Okay. So, Cor, you head inside? Yes, he will descend down the magical staircase. And you are followed by Nelthor, Captain Deeb, and a few of the others. So you and the others head down this sandstone staircase. It actually very quickly resembles a lavish entrance to a beautiful house. The floor and walls are mainly sandstone, but here and there are some accents of marble. There's a lot of magical lights set up to illuminate this place. And as you reach the bottom of the staircase, it actually expands into a large, like, round courtyard. And in the middle of this courtyard is actually a large pool of water. And above it, a magical light source that almost resembles the sun. There's Hmm. also a bunch of plants and even some small animals in here, like butterflies and some bugs. But they look magical in Hmm. nature. They don't look like normal bugs. Um, And the place is actually quite nice. It is roomy in here. Like, you you can comfortably move around. This place is like the size of half a football field, maybe. It's it's big in here. It's like a mansion. Yeah, it's a mansion. Um, There is a place for all sorts of food and drinks that Nira quickly summons up for the guests. There is also another area of the courtyard that has a lot of those um, comfy looking beds and bedrolls there. There's places to lounge. And in one of the corners, which seems to be a bit away from the entertainment area, you can also spot what seems like some kind of, you don't really know, like an alchemy station. There's a lot of little bottles, vials, even a cauldron, and a bunch of unique looking herbs. Oh, it also smells amazing in here. What's it smell like? I don't know if you can even pinpoint it, but it smells a bit like, I want to say like a perfume store, but not so offensive. It's nice. It Does it smell like the ocean? Yes. Salty. But nice. Like salty flowers. Yeah. Do you like my sense of salty flowers? <laughs> <laughs> Get it in a bottle. Yeah. Get it in a 50 bottle. 50 gold. Yeah. <laughs> it has salt and it has flowers. I have a question. Yes. Where is Sandra? Sandra is in the lamp along mm. with Nira. Much smaller, resting on a pillow. About the size of a dog right now. Ah. Cora, what do you like to do? I'm, firstly, he's impressed by this place. She's right. It is, in fact, not tiny. I don't know. I guess he turns to Nira and he does like a little a little formal bow. He says, thank you for welcoming into your home. You are quite welcome. Don't break anything, please. I'll try not to. And she also directs all of you around saying, you can sleep over there. There's food over there. All the good stuff. So you were unable to return here with your lamp gone? That's correct. This is the inside of my lamp. So without the lamp, I can't exactly get into it. So were you just hovering above the sand forever without Mm. being able to find shelter? Well, not quite. If you recall when I first introduced myself to you, I can move throughout the sand freely. Since I didn't have my lamp, I would just reside inside the sand. The rip sands can be quite a nice place. It's kind of like being in a bed that moves you around. I've tried sleeping in sand and I don't find it very comfortable. 
well, you're also not from this place, nor are you a genie, so I don't think this pleasure is for you. You're right, that was probably it. Speaking of, where are you from? I haven't seen your kind of demon before. You um, are a demon, I presume. Correct. I'm from the Abyss. I am a Bathos demon. Oh, well, I've learned something new today. I have learned many new things today. What is your purpose? I am on the surface for a special mission, and I can't say more than that. Oh, fair enough. I won't pry. But I am a little curious. Okay. I might ask you later when you're drunk. Mm, I will not <laughs> fall for such tactics. But let me ask your, you a question. Go what on. is the purpose of a genie? Coming out with the hard-hitting questions. But really, it's to grant wishes. Hmm. Which I believe you do owe me one now. Right. Yes. Yes, I owe you one. What sort of capabilities do your wishes have? Uh, it's hard to say exactly until the wish is made. Even genies can't exactly describe it. If you ask for too much, it could go poorly. Uh, if you ask for too little, you might feel like you've wasted your wish. But I can assure you that a genie's power could not outdo the power of gods. So perhaps that can narrow it down a little bit. I would never ask to outdo a god. I know where I stand on things. Right. A cleric. Yes. Yes, yes, exactly. Mm. Then you like when she when she accurately calls these a cleric, I think he like he stands a little bit taller, like puffs out of chest. Like he's like he's <laughs> proud that she could that she could catch that. Like, yes, good. I'm a cleric. A cleric of the great Abrath. I recognize the uniform. They are good people, if a little new on the surface, but mostly surprisingly polite. We understand that the best way to get what we want with the surface is to make bargains and deals. Demons have tried bloody conquest for millennia, but Aberith has brought in a age of peace would be throwing it a bit too far, of deals and compromises. Though didn't it take the bloodiest of all conquests to do that? Well, yeah, but that's how it goes. Breaking a few eggs to make an omelette? Yeah. Right, of course, of course sure. Well, the, the saying down there is a few skulls to make a stew, so... So what about your pink friend? Is he not coming down? No, he apparently detests closed spaces. It's quite nice in here. In fact, I even have sunlight, so... From the outside, you can't really tell that. It does just look like you're sticking him into a bottle. I suppose. Do you want to try to talk to him? Uh, very well. Before I will we need serve some... dinner? Perhaps some booze to help me persuade him. He's fond of this stuff. I would check the ship. There's bound to be some in there. He looks at her perplexed. You don't drink? No. Interesting. So it's not a genie thing then. All right. Uh, um, no. <laughs> okay. Well, you're about to meet a very strong drinker. All right. I am I am ready. Uh, I guess he'll go out. He will exit now. Okay. So Cor heads out. While you can see everybody else uh, is kind of settling in, and you can also see as you leave that Nelthor actually starts striking up a conversation with Nira. Hmm. As Cor leaves the staircase, Rooster, what are you doing? I mean, he's staring at the bottle after everybody leaves and goes in. Mm -hmm. And he's like, nope, hate that. And then he's going to turn around and he's going to go down into the ship. See if he can find some booze. Okay, you head down into the ship. And as you get a few staircases down into the... Oh, God, my ship terms. The boat. Under the boat. The boat. Inside of boat. As you get inside the boat... In in Dubai. You find booze. <laughs> okay. I, I want, yeah, I want him to, to go down and find some booze. You hear, as you're exploring the ship, you hear some giggling dwarves followed by, oh, what is this? You see them huddled a ra uh, around a barrel that's been opened. What are you guys doing? We were looking for ale and the stuff is, uh, I don't know, it doesn't taste like ale. Can I... Can I just, like, dunk my head in it? Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. You may. Okay. You're claustrophobic, but you fully dunk your head into a barrel of booze. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Priorities. <laughs> he dunks his head, and then he pulls up and with just a whole cheekfuls of, of whatever it is, and he swallows. Root beer. Root beer? Yeah, that's like, uh, sugar. Yeah, that's very good. Uh, uh, you're gonna have it. We're looking for the real stuff. Yeah, me too. Oh, now I'm all sticky. He like starts licking all over his face. <laughs> you lick off sandy root beer. Yeah, I want to see if I can find a... You know what? Can I make a sniff check? Can I sniff for booze? Oh my god. Survival. Get a nat 20, please. Snap, sniff. Oh my god. Oh my god, nat 20. I got a nat 20. I'm not joking. Wow. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay, so this, okay. This has to be just an can ability Can we make this canonly now? Yeah, 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 this just has to be an ability for him. He can sniff booze. Let's see, what are we going to do here? We're going to do... 
You have a permanent plus four to all of your booze related checks. I ask you anything booze related for rolling, like a saving throw or like to smell it, you get a plus four that you can apply yourself. And I know plus four is pretty generous, but we've established that Rooster is no stranger to hard stuff. So mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I'm guessing I hone in like a fucking hunter dog, mm -hmm. like point, like tink. <laughs> <laughs> you do, and you actually go a different way from the dwarves. You head towards the captain's quarters, where you find, once you open them, a more lavish room. Definitely Captain Carmichael's quarters. This place is decked out. A few too many colors in here. I like it. Of course you would like it. Don't like him, but I like it. Tragic guy you hate has good sense of interior decorating. Even though he doesn't, but Rooster has no fucking sense of interior yeah, decorating. Yeah, yeah. Everything's gotta have glitter and bright colors. Anyways, your nose leads you to under the bed. And then he like pulls, I guess, the bed away. Where you find a small locked chest. Oh, okay. There's a little padlock on it. Uh, I bring it out and I go, I found something! And he's all sticky still. All the dwarves are just like, <laughs> <laughs> Yep. I rolled uh, an 18 for that. So they definitely hear you and they all, you just hear, and they all rush over <laughs> with their short but fast paced legs. Yeah. They know. They know. Yeah. They come in. What, what did you find? What you got? Oh, Captain's Quarter. Smart. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Puts down the, the chest and goes, There's booze in there. I got a good sniffer. And it's sniffing booze in there. And we just need to get it open. One of them grabs a hammer and breaks it open. Not the chest, but the lock. Oh, okay. They break, like they <laughs> it would up. be funny if they just put a hole <laughs> in it. <laughs> yeah. They break the lock, they open the chest, and inside you find a bunch of assorted booze Whoa. of really high quality, also low quality, but it's all over the place. And you realize this is probably some kind of like confiscation chest. Ooh. He didn't let his people drink all the time. Ooh. What a jerk. Yeah, what a yeah, jerk. Yeah, exactly. And you probably have 10 liters of good and bad stuff in front of you. Damn. You got like everything from moonshine to high quality whiskey. Yeah. Exactly. <gasps> okay. Uh, how do you want to start it out? Well, what's your favorite? You get first pick. Really? What's your poison? Are you sure? Oh, I don't want to drink poison. I heard that kills you. This is poison. Booze is poison? That's where the saying comes from. It's the good stuff. Am I immune to poison? Apparently. So what's your poison? Okay. Pick something, pink guy. Uh, we want to get in there. All right. Whatever. Rum's a good fit. I don't drink, so this is a problem. Um, it's rum. It's rum. Lucky for you, you're on a pirate ship full of rum. Yay. <laughs> so yeah, he's definitely, he's all for it. And I mean, if they have root beer, that's just like Coke and rum. So Rooster, you make off with a good looking full bottle of rum. And then you go over and grab a bit of root beer. Yes. You got yourself a flask full of both. Yeah, I kind of probably, I open it, I drink a bunch of it, like half. Oh my god. And then I take the other and I dunk it into the root beer and pull it out so it's mixed. Yeah, okay. Taking it back for a second to the drinks half the bottle. Yeah. Con save. Got it. <laughs> Make that a booze roll. Nat, Nat 20. 20. What the fuck? I'm, dude, I can re-roll if you want, but. No, 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 I see it. Um... Like water. <laughs> <laughs> I'm immune to poison! Absolutely. One of the dwarfs like sees you pop open the bottle, start chugging it back, and he like is not like breaking eye contact with you, but like starts sh shoving his other front shoulder. Like, <laughs> yeah. dude, dude, look at that, look at that. Fucking look, look, look. I that's thought like, he was a kid, that's yeah. That's exactly what happened. And a rooster, once you like dunk it to like fill it up or whatever, they're all like, Argh! where'd it go? And they all like, you know, clink their bottles and we start clink. drinking as well. You have earned, like, a permanent level of respect with dwarves. Fuck yeah. Mm -hmm. this, this specific pair of dwarves. Oh, they will forever remember you. Will I be a legend to other people? That pink guy, you could just drink it straight like you've never seen before. Okay, well, then uh, Rooster kind of, like, sits down and just kind of drinks some of it. But I think what I'll have him do is I'll actually have him do it in front of the bottle. Because he's waiting for Corey. He's kind of like a dog that's waiting for the owner to come back. So <laughs> okay. he's just kind of got his knees up and he's sitting down on the ground and he's just drinking. So you sit down, you start Staring drinking. Staring at the thing. Uh, but he is all far away from it enough that he's not like, I'm not going to get sucked up in that thing. So as you start drinking, you see Cor emerge from the bag. Oh, uh, hi. Hello. How's it going? It is good. It's not it's not compact in there at all. You might actually find it nice. Mm, nah, I, I doubt that. And then he takes a drink. <laughs> Suit yourself then. Uh uh Cor? Mm. Can I can I talk to you really quick? Okay. Okay. Did you want a drink? Sure. Okay. Hands the bottle off. Yeah, we'll try some. 
It's good. good old rum. A little too sweet for your taste, though. This is very sweet. It's real good, right? Mm. And licorice flavored. Yeah. Which I guess they have in the in the abyss now. <laughs> <laughs> or he's tried it before. He's had, he's had licorice before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's where they make they make licorice in the under. In oh, the black licorice, licorice well, is made. From I was gonna say that might as well be an abyssal tree. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's that true. stuff is from hell. I love it. Especially like my the point s- stands. Yeah. <laughs> the salty one. <laughs> okay, no. <laughs> but I do like some good some good black licorice. No. No. Eat all for me then. Yeah, all for you. All for core. Yeah. So anyway, about today, uh, I wanted to say I'm sorry. Because you were really mad at me. Because, you know, I didn't know that genie stuff. And, you know, the lady took me through the train and Jessica got broken and you had to run and all that stuff. And you're pretty mad. Are you apologizing because you did something wrong or because you think I'm mad at you? He stops and thinks for a, like a deep second. <laughs> uh, I n- never, nobody's ever asked me kind of like that. I mean, isn't it both? Because like I did something wrong and you're mad. So I should talk to you, right? The problem is that, so I didn't know what I didn't know. And now you know that I didn't know that I didn't know about what I didn't know. Right. You I know? know you did not know. I was upset because I thought you knew. So I suppose it's my fault then. Well, the problem is that I thought I knew. Uh, We both thought you knew, but you didn't know. And that because I didn't know, Jessica got hurt. And I got pushed through a train. And we had to deal with Nira. Mm -hmm. Still don't like her. It was kind of crazy, though. Never been pushed through a train like that. In moments like this, my teachers would ask me what I would do differently next time. How I would learn from something like this. Mm, I guess I should go into every situation telling people that I don't know anything. Unless you do know something. Okay. But I didn't know. But the thing is, I thought I knew. Right. So then I takes a swig. <laughs> do you want a swig? Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Wash that down. I also kind of feel bad about the people. They're mm, regret- it was regrettable that they died, but they're probably doing okay right now. Yeah. I mean, not about the whole dead thing, but they'll go into the hands of Italia, and she is a fair goddess. I don't know. I mean, they usually just come back, so it doesn't really matter. What do you mean they come back? It's not like zombies, right? I don't know what that is. Not a dead, right? Well, like, you know, when people die, it, they come back. They just, like, get back up. But it kind of is, I don't know, It like, it's random, I find. Sometimes they come back quick, but they'll always come back eventually. Just kind of depends. No, when? no, I, I think you might be confusing that with sleeping uh, or being knocked unconscious. No, no, I'm, no, I'm pretty sure like death is, you know, when you die and you're different than living. And then when people die, sometimes they just, I mean, they just come back, but it just depends. Of course, so confused. Do people come back around here? I mean, you, maybe down there, people just die and then they're dead, dead and they don't come back and they right. don't. But here, they just come back. Cora's gone from being confident that you don't know what you're talking about to now being like, I, I guess I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they just come back around here. Shit. <laughs> and, not, and, and not in an undead way. Not in an L4 way. They, they come back exactly as they used to be. Pre- well, I mean... If, and you've seen this happen. Yes. But, you know, if they die weird, they can come back and look really weird. But usually if they just die, they come, they come back. I'm going to have to ask somebody else about this. As the GM, I refuse to elaborate on any of this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Cora's probably like, maybe this is starting to feel like something maybe you, maybe you think you know about, but you don't know about. Because where I come from, if things die, they never come back. And if they do come back, it's because it's wrong and they shouldn't be coming back. But I don't get it. Because it's like, why is it wrong? Isn't death bad? Death just means you're done. You don't come back. You you failed. You aren't able to be here anymore and continue what you were doing because some, you died. You, something killed you or you, I don't know. I hear some of you think people up here get sick sometimes. You sneeze and that'll kill you. If you're dead, you don't come back. If, if you cut something's head off in the abyss, they do not come back. They stay gone. That's kind of sad. It's the way life works. Well, down there, maybe. Yes, down there. <laughs> Things are killed and they do not come back. 
That's but really sad. It's, and it's I'm an, sorry it's that it's an you, important rule. I'm sorry that you grew up like that. taking the wrong lesson from this. <laughs> <laughs> Corey, you okay? No, I don't touch me. <laughs> you want another drink? <laughs> okay. Look, uh, I don't want to make you upset, but I just want you to know that those people will be okay. Are they coming but, back? <laughs> I mean, they should. For those who can't see from home, Cor is making the most like confused, disgusted. I'm like faces. pinching my eye, my my nose bridge. I'm just like I'm having. I mean, puts down the booze. I have to go ask somebody. Excuse me. <laughs> goes to find some of the dwarves. This is a fucking delight to watch. Okay. By the way, all right. I okay. have to clear this up. Uh, okay, man. Poor Cor lived in a very sad world. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Cor, where are you heading? I'm going to find the dwarves. I can probably hear them hee-hawing about all of their alcohol they found. The ones below deck? Yeah, Absolutely. the Hootenannian ones. Yeah, you find them. You find them. They're okay. having a good time enjoying their drink. <laughs> he, like, comes down the stairs. Boom, 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 boom. If you die, do you stay dead here? Whoa, 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 demon guy. What are we talking about death all of a sudden? Come have a drink with us. Very threatening. You know, <laughs> if you die... <laughs> <laughs> what happens when you die? Yeah. I don't want to shit myself right now. Like, why don't you just have a drink, bud? Big fucking I, demon coming at you. He comes you. over, oh. he gets some booze. He takes a swig of booze. Hey! Okay, all right. The people who died today on the boat, they are dead, correct? And on the surface, they don't just come back later. I mean, did you see them? They exploded. Right, so they are dead. Yeah. Okay, and... Do people normally, under other circumstances, just come back from the death dead later? Is that a thing? Well, I mean, they always come back eventually as to, like, I mean, it depends who you believe. A lot of people are like, reincarnation, you know, and a new life and all that good stuff. Right, okay. Living a better life the second time around. All right. After they go through Fatalia and all that. Well, unless they were real, you know, real pieces of work, then they oh. just go right. and they stay down there. Mm. Okay. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah, you're welcome. Why don't you just stay and drink with us some more? No, no I need. No, I have to clear some stuff up. Okay. Right, Korg goes back on above deck. You head back up above deck. I'm and... at the front of the boat now. I'm doing the whole like Titanic. Titanic. You well, did that it's a really big today. boat. You already did that once today on the other boat. Yeah, I know. I'm doing it on this on one. Every this every boat. Is like, this is how I like conquer the boat. Uh huh. <laughs> All right. I've conquered you now. Yeah. <laughs> but I, only, I do already have now. a wife. I'm sorry to disappoint you. Yeah, yeah. This is just, they're friends. We're just friends. No. Rooster. What's up? Y- you were mistaken again. What? People do not come back after they die here, unless it's reincarnation, but that's a whole other thing. The people who died today are permanently gone, as I thought. No. I don't, uh, no, that's, that's not how that goes. This is going to be all session today, everybody. What do you mean? This is That's not how that... That is how it goes. Who do you know that has died and then come back to life and is not undead? Uh, sure, Martin? Lewis? What was that guy's name? Peter? I think it was Peter. Uh, Rwanda? Have I met any of these people? Which one's Martin? Is Martin the guy that he doesn't like? No, that was Marco. So you're naming people I've never met. He's never met. Yeah. Yeah, and then he, he, he keeps going through a All list. Right. Like he All right. he's saying Stop. it like he fucking knows. I like how you just also casually list Stop. Rwanda, the yeah. country. But Stop. okay. Stop. <laughs> Has anybody that I have met in the town of Teak have they ever died and then come back to life? No, I don't think anybody's died. I mean, the guy that you killed, I mean, I'm expecting him to probably come up maybe weeks from now. Sometimes no, it's random. N- no, I am confident that he is dead. I definitely I definitely successfully killed him. Yeah, no, yeah. you did. And it's it is permanent. No. Cor, I'm just going to add one thing. You do know as a trained cleric that powerful clerics can bring people dead by resurrection. Okay. I'm just going to throw that into the mix to make this more complicated. Thank you. <laughs> Let's fuck with it <laughs> even more. Thanks for not helping me. Yeah. Yeah, people, you know, they die and then they can come back. But the whole thing, I mean, it's unpleasant because you don't, these people die and sometimes it's really like terrible. And But you know that they'll come back, which makes it better. So for you to grow up in a place where that isn't, like, core, and, like, touches his hand. I'm very sorry that you grew up <laughs> just, like, in that his environment. Hand like the woman in that vine. She's just like... <laughs> <laughs> With the bus? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Looks at him like, do you touch me? And he's just like, no, you... <laughs> it's okay. It's been a long day. Um, he's just going to leave you alone because he can see you just like... <laughs> Yeah, Corey's like, quite crunchy at like the moment. very crunchy at the moment. In that moment, you hear from a distance, Friends? Friends, where are you? It's Nelthor's voice. Oh, God. Oh, hey, Nelthor! <laughs> Rooster! Hello. I'm so glad I find you. Nira has served dinner. If you would like to join us... No. 
Then please let the dwarves know as well. Okay. And now Thor heads back inside. I'm going to go and get some food. Okay. I'll, I'll bring you some then. Okay. Also, when you have a moment, can you tell Nira to talk to me? Okay. I'm going to go tell the dwarves. All right. And just before they part ways, Cora says, Oh, so I am not mad at you anymore. I'm a bit miffed about the whole death thing, but I'm not about the not knowing thing. So then are we friends? We will continue traveling together to Kikoma. Yay. Okay, he's really excited about that. You big, big grin from him. Okay. And then he just like runs over to the dwarves. Hey, dwarves, it's food. Yeah, and they all come running out. And they just like pile into the staircase, just <laughs> rolling down as a ball of drunk dwarves. Kor is just like going down the staircase and he just hears like the... the okay, like, yeah, Kor is going down the staircase. Yeah. And suddenly, so the Indiana Jones trap is activated <laughs> and you hear the boulder of dwarves come down and start rolling down the staircase towards you. <laughs> Give me a dexterity saving throw. Damn it! <laughs> the smell of booze. Oh, uh, 12. Uh, you do not pass because for them I rolled 17. Damn it. So, Cor, as you're heading down, you used to maybe start running or trying to dodge, but they just, <laughs> you, you join the mass as they oh. roll over you and you become a part of the drunken dwarves. <laughs> it's like, this is how I go down. <laughs> no, your hands are sticky. <laughs> it's stink <laughs> sticky and stinky and they're hollering and eventually you hit the bottom. You probably like crash into a vase or something and y you all fall apart and they're all laughing their ass off. You take no damage. Yeah. But this is important. I have to peel a dwarf <laughs> off of my backside, though, after that. Yeah. It's like Velcro. Mm. Once you've done that, you see a circular table set up around that little lake in the center of the room. Kind of like a very large, well, dining table. Mm. And the table is just full of all sorts of amazing foods, like fruits and meats and veggies, like everything. Sorry, I was still getting caught up on the death thing. For a there. <laughs> Your brain just went. My nah. brain flatlined again because I was just like, "How the fuck am I gonna deal with this?" Like, Core's like eating, and so, like he just stops. The food like falls off his fork. It's like, "Are you okay?" <laughs> anyway, he is he is pleased about dinner. Okay. So is everybody else. Yeah. Everybody's hooting and digging right into it. All right. Yeah, he will. He will. He'll get a good couple of bites in on like maybe a drumstick. Uh, and then he'll put together a plate for Rooster as well. Nira seems very pleased because... Well, I guess you don't know because, but she just seems very pleased that everybody seems to be having a good time. Not suspiciously pleased, right? Not like a he who you're eating my... No, she's not like in the enchanted. corner like... <laughs> 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 she's just looking around, you know, with a bit of a grin and being like, hmm. I wish to know... I want to know on our on our scale, our imaginary scale, how the rating of quality on this. Because every meal we've eaten so oh, far... Oh, that's right. We've been like... We're, we're making like a... We're making like a travelocity. Oh, it's bad. So I just rolled for it. Oh, no. Oh, no. I rolled a two. Oh, oh no. no. So Nira is an awful cook. Apparently, she's all about aesthetics and not at all about flavor. And you just remembered that she's not been in here for God knows how long and probably haven't had guests in even longer. When you bite into the turkey leg, for example, it's dry as hell, completely lacks flavor, and it's like cold. Weak old fridge turkey. It's like, how did you even manage that? You just got here. <laughs> that's a that's a skill on its own. So the, despite the food looking 10 out of 10, yeah, it tastes like a 2 out of 10. I feel he eats some, and he's not so barbaric to, like, not pretend. Like, he'll, he's like, mmm, it's as you say that, you also look around and a lot of the others are like, mm, yeah, mm, tasty, mm. as nobody wants to offend the genie. The booze will take some of the edge off of that. Like, give them another three hours and they'll be coming back to this thing and they'll think it's the best thing I've ever eaten. Absolutely. So they're fine. Uh, he'll put together a plate. And it's like, very excellent, uh, 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 lots of good food. Thank you. What is Nelfar eating? The same. Does he eat brains? Yeah. He's not eating a brain right now. Okay. I didn't know he could eat He's other eating things. a normal plate. I did not know he could eat things other than brains. Well, I'm we can get that things. into the next debate when you solved your death versus life thing. <laughs> anyway. We'll do the whole, like, do undead poop. <laughs> we'll get into that later. <laughs> That's the Patreon exclusive content. Yeah. I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the one Patreon we don't have. No. <laughs> anyway, I have returned to the surface of the boat with the plate of food 
uh, for Rooster. What's Rooster doing? I think he's at the back of the boat, but he's kind of like, he's got his arms over the railing and he's just kind of looking at the starry sky and the moving waves of the sand ocean. It's a calm evening ocean of sand, but still. Uh, anyway, Cora Rule returned to the surface with uh, with Rooster's plate. I, I brought food. Oh. Um, uh, you're uh, not a picky eater, are you? No, not at all. I didn't think so. Here you go. He'll eat it. Mm-hmm. Two out of ten. He eats it. Better. No, he eats it all, and he's just like, you know, it's not the worst thing I've eaten. I've, and Cora thinks about it. The worst thing I've ever eaten. It's not this. I once had to eat liver that had been left out for two days. That was mm, disagreeable. Was it still, like... Attached? Attached? <laughs> yeah, that was my thought. You know, it might have been. It might have been. That's that's kind of rough. Mm. Sounds like you kind of grew up in a rough place. It was a part of my training. It was important that I spend a little bit of time alone in the tunnels of the abyss and had to fend for myself and forage for food. It's just a regular part of training. That's kind of intense. It was important. Why? Because I needed to get stronger. And I needed to get stronger fast. And I needed to prove that I could survive all by myself in dire conditions. Why did you have to get stronger, though? Because you're already quite big and scary. Thank you, but all demons are big and scary. The things that make one demon better than the other is strength and skill. And these are things you need to train. Were you fighting other demons? Sometimes. Well, most often, yes. Was it just training or did you guys not like each other? It was training. There was the occasional beast that was thrown into the ring with me that I that certainly didn't like me, but I dealt with it. I killed it, and I got stronger because of it. Well, I mean, I'm glad you're all strong because, I mean, now you're up here. So that's good. You're correct. I earned my seat, and I gained this great opportunity to come here and serve Aberth directly. It is an opportunity I'm very grateful for, and I did not simply... I earned this chance. I rose to be worthy of it. Well, Cor, I definitely think you're worthy of it. Thank you. While Cor is talking about like how he's tough and strong and he is willing to do hard, tough things because he is tough and strong, he has ceased eating the uh, the meal that Nira <laughs> made and instead he is eating the much yummier rations that Amelia gave him. <laughs> As some time passes with you guys eating your rations on the deck, eventually Nira emerges from the lamp and approaches you guys. Floating, never walking. Enjoying yourselves? Well, I mean, the booze is good. The Glad food's not that. that bad. Are you sure you don't want to come inside? I've got a pool. No, I'm good. All right. So if you can, like, sense me, how can I sense you? You can't? No, I don't think so. Uh, oh. Maybe? <sighs> like, stares at her really hard. Give me concentration. I hope you get a net one. Yeah, it was a 12. When you actually try hard, you do feel an ever so slight connection, presence. It's like you're both attached to a similar string and you can feel as she's moving around, pulling it a little bit. Mm -hmm. But you only roll a 12. It's a very faint feeling and you have to concentrate very hard to feel it. It just breaks. And as soon as you stop, like really like, you know, straightening yourself, (laughs) it fades. Okay. Uh, yeah, he's like, eh, I can kind of feel it, I guess. Well, there you go. Okay, all right. So then how do I make sure this doesn't happen again? You know, going through a train and... Invading my domain and uh, I accident. didn't invade anything. I was just in a train and eating breakfast. I am sorry. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I don't travel much, but... I believe the custom is that if you travel into another genie's domain, you touch the lamp to the border of it. Like which your will, lamp? Well, if you cross a border, you touch your lamp to that border. Well, I don't have it. You know that. Right. Um, so then how do I do it if I go other places? Well, perhaps you could do a similar custom. Could I just touch the ground? Yes. Maybe just touch the ground. Like yell at the dirt? Well, I don't know if you need to yell at it, but perhaps just touch it for a while. Try to connect with it. If anything, the genie of that domain will certainly notice you touching their domain and you staying in one spot is not as aggressive as you charging at me at high speed. And that should be Was okay. it because I ate your dirt? Is that it? Because I ate the sand? Is that how you found me? 
It's like eating a part of me. It's weird. Don't put it like that. Yeah, don't do that. Well, don't, don't put it like it's that. It's really weird. Uh, You're strange. Me. He I'm is, the strange yes. one. Yes, you are. I'm with her. You're strange. What? Yeah. <laughs> I have a question. Sure. Can you, could you hear him at a distance if he entered your domain? If he said something? Oh, it's not like I'm omniscient. I can sense his presence. And I could sense that he was coming towards, well, me very quickly. That is what alarmed me because I have not had a visitor like that in a long time, especially not, you know, like I said, like a genie like that. So I assumed it was a, some kind of hostile attempt to take my domain away from me and kill me. Perhaps then when you enter a domain, you should try bowing. It's a custom to often bow if you enter someone's place of residence. Bowing and touching the sand will at least give you the best odds. How do I know when I'm there? I don't know how far your domain goes, and I don't know when another domain starts. Just look at the color of the sand. (laughs) You're in my beautiful blue sand. Is there another genie on the way to Kikoma? Another territory? No. Kikoma is in my domain. Oh, good. I assume you'll let us into the city. (laughs) Yes. Yes, of course. I know you now. You're welcome to come and go whenever you please, and however fast you wish. Mm, Thank you. These sands will never swallow you. Court. What was her lamp like inside? Hmm, like a terrace, kind of like a sunny courtyard with a fo- with a pond on the inside and light. <laughs> you almost wouldn't think you were indoors at all. Right? How do you have it like that? I made it. You made your lamp? No, I shaped the inside of it. I didn't know you could do that. You don't know many things. Well, shush. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think Cor's like say, taking a drink when she says that, and he's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Your lamp is an extension of you, so you, you Well, just I don't like my lamp. Must not be a nice place, then. No, it's not. Then maybe change that. Well, I don't have it, so. I, I mean, do... I destroyed it first, and then I put you it dest- in. And I put it in a different one. And you're, st- oh, today I learned something new. We're all learning something new. Mm-hmm. What was I that? I admire your courage. But perhaps once you find your lamp again, and I hope you do, you can shape it into something more beautiful. I would be happy to give you some pointers. I'll be fine. That's fine, Thank too. Thank you. I think you should take up on some of her offers. Well, right now I don't need that stuff. So it doesn't no, matter. No, right now you need to find your lamp. No, I... No. Well, if later... If someone were to destroy it, or... Well, it's not a I good already idea. tried. Didn't work. Apparently it Just find your lamp well. for your sake. What is your wish? Don't do it. Don't don't do a wish. Don't. Why? Because all wishes are it's bad news. Don't. Hey, just like points to Nira. Nira looks confused. Yeah. Don't you dare. I know this stick. You can't do that. He's my friend. I can grant wishes. Oh, I know you can, but they always turn bad. No. Yes. No. Yes. What? No. I don't. The wish is a wish. It becomes what it is. Bad. It always goes bad. If they wish for something bad, perhaps. No, even if they wish something good, it always goes bad. Don't trust her. And just like points at core. Don't. That'll get you killed. And then you come back, but you don't know when you're going to come back. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm... And I don't know when you're going to come back. I'm not sure. I am I am very confused Begun. at this point. Duh. What? Excuse you. <laughs> Go, I, this is my that. domain. <laughs> <laughs> Go away. Core like not going anywhere. Core like forced like uh, puts his hand on your face again. <laughs> Stop that. Besides, it's his wish, not yours. Mm-mm. He l- he looks at you seriously. Like don't do it. Like but but it's covered with a mouth. <laughs> we can hear you. He looks at Rooster. Then he looks back at M- Nira. He says, "I will decide what my wish is later." Okay. I don't like holding debts to someone. Later, as in tomorrow a or a few weeks. <laughs> I'm going to be in your territory for a while, so I think I, I'll decide later. Genies make wishes. Demons make IOUs. I don't like owing anybody. Well, I can't think of a proper wish right now. I'm not trying to deceive you or take more from you than you're willing to offer. I just don't know what I would wish for yet, that's all. Well, as I've said, I don't like owing anybody. So, I'll need to know your wish by the end of tomorrow. Otherwise, the offer expires. No, no, no. That's not fair. He gets to set up the deal the way he likes it. But you really shouldn't do a wish. I already went out of my way to get you your lamp. I didn't have to do that, right? Right. I appreciate that. So then I am somebody who is willing to 
be patient to make a good decision that will benefit more than one person. Great. Also, when is the genie ever given the terms? Genies don't get to give terms. They just do it. I don't want you to rush it, Hmm. but I'm tired of owing some people. Who else did you owe? My past is my own, but I've learned from mistakes. Very well. But I think it'd be worse for a genie if they didn't grant a wish at all and went negated on one of their promises than waiting for a wish to be granted. Spoken like a demon. Contracts and deals. I'll check in with you tomorrow. Thank you. Would you like to reside in my place or out here? There's beds if you wish, and the door will stay open. I don't trust that. Thank you. With that, I bid you good night. Good night to you. He glares at her. She looks at you. Cor rotates Rooster around 90 degrees so that he's not glaring at her anymore. Good night to you too, Nira. Oh, I will. And then she leaves. I, mean, I was going to say good night. <laughs> good night. She walks away. I'm not wishing a good night. She like walks away. She chuckles and says, yeah, right. Got to be careful with those wishes. I uh, don't like her. Don't do it. Don't. You seem to have, have bad personal experiences with wishes. Yeah, I do. So then don't do it. Don't care to tell me about why. Okay. Um, sure. Mm, takes a swig. <laughs> Every time I would cast a wish, that person who casts or, or wants the wish uh, would die. Or like become incapacitated is what they would say. Something different. But you, I'm trying to fix that. You said that if I found your lamp, you would let me make a wish. Yeah, I I did I did say that. That I would grant you a wish. I don't want to kill you or anything. That's not the, the thing. The thing is, is that I want to help people. And I want to cast wishes for people. But right now, currently, um, I mean, first of all, I don't have my lamp. And any wish I do goes bad. So, I'm trying to figure that out. But I just want you to know I wasn't trying to kill you or anything. You could not kill me even if you tried. I'm too strong. Yeah, I mean, you are very strong. You're like one of the strongest guys I know. Mm. But, Court, like, I'm sorry that that felt misleading. Hmm. You think she was trying to deceive me somehow? Yes, because I know wishes, and they always go bad. And there's no way to make a wish that is that does not go bad. We've tried. It doesn't. So you, that's why you got rid of your lamp. Yeah, I didn't like it. And the whole losing it in a bet story? I did lose it in a bet. And I was drunk. But I may or may not have purposely done it. Instead of, you know, forgot. The thing is, Cor, is that I don't have much to offer. You know, kind of gestures to himself. But when I tell people I can grant them a wish, they become my friend. And they like me. And I I mean, I I like them. And when I had my lamp... People would like me until they cast a wish, and either they would die or get really mad, or people around them would get really mad. So it was kind of limited, where friends kind of went in and out a lot, but people seem to like me a lot when I say I'm a genie and I can grant them a wish. I mean, you became my friend, right? We are comrades. It's comrades, friends. Is that what that means? Is that what your, your people call friends? It's the closest things we have friends that I've had to friends okay. people who share similar their goals and aren't hostile to each other that's a good measurement of friendship hmm. let yep. me just make a note of that abyss is Russia <laughs> come on <laughs> comrades comrades <laughs> I didn't have time for friends some demons can have friends but I had to focus on training so that I could come to the surface and c- complete my my duties. Well, your duties are important to you, and you're important to me, so they're important to me too. Uh, then that makes us comrades. Good. Now that you've negotiated, we are friends! <laughs> yeah. What would you like to do? Hmm. Well, Cor isn't going to leave Rooster because he has learned since the last time that you will just scream down into the lamp for him anyway <laughs> if he tries to go. Yeah, or he'll just like stare at the lamp yeah. like beside it like a like a dog waiting. with separation anxiety. Yeah, absolutely. So Cor is just like, all right, well, I guess I'm just sleeping here. Okay, cool. Oh, I have to go make a prayer first. Can I watch? 
I won't talk. Okay. He will do his little end of the evening prayer to Abrith. What are you saying, your prayer? Uh, please continue pr- to protect, to guide me on my journey, uh, so that I can be successful in enacting your will. And all, he like he also like opens one eye and looks at Rooster. Yeah. And he's like, and also, um, please give Rooster some extra help. Yeah, he's he's shifting back and forth like that dog that has like it's got a brush or something and it's so excited. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> it's that vine of it going back and forth, so happy, like yeah, yeah. yeah. Cora, when you make your prayer, you notice a slight breeze going over the candles that I believe you light for your mm-hmm. prayers. Yep, yeah, making them like point towards what you roughly remember the direction of Kikoma to be. I think Abirth favors us. Oh, how did you do that? I didn't. It was the wind, but also maybe Abirth. Abirth. Wow, that's really cool. Thank you, Abirth. Abirth's just like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> cool. You go to sleep? Yeah. Sure. Awesome. Okay. So the both of you slept outside. You both wake up to the burning sun of the desert as the sun rises and it's quite hot immediately. Mm-hmm. Ow. 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 Yeah. Ow. And uh, then you both take six points of piercing damage as a cannonball has struck right in the middle of you. Oh, God. Initiatives. Oh, oh for fuck's sake. Hey, I hope you like this episode of Fool's Gold Sands. If you'd like to see more of our stuff, like all the comics and character art and everything we're posting, you can go to foolsgold.fun slash sands to check it out there. If you'd like to support us, there's also a tip jar on the website. So go check it out and I'll see you next time.